fans, Chuck Marlow from ringside, and I welcome you to another hour of championship wrestling. These matches are under the sanction and supervision of the State Athletic Commission. Your referee is signed by the commission tonight. In this first match, John Shorn. We are all set to get things underway, so let's get up to ringside and make the necessary introductions. First of all, from Chicago, Illinois, in the uh, near corner, having a little word with his opponent outside the ring, is Johnny Case. Johnny Case from Chicago. His opponent entering the ring now from Albuquerque, New Mexico, with his manager, pretty boy Bobby Heenan, ladies and gentlemen, Black Jack Lanza. Lanza, I gave you the proper introduction. Black Jack Lanza. Lanza with a few uh, extraneous comments, as always, approaches us here at ringside, and we're just about set to get things underway. One fall match, Lanza versus Case, and of course Heenan in and out of the ropes, and you can pretty well expect him to at least have words to say in the corner as he advises his man. Awfully nice to have you with us tonight. We hope you make it a point to join us each week. Championship wrestling always uh, the most exciting, and we hope that you find it entertaining each week. Lanza comes over again for a word or two, and there are many who feel that maybe Heenan does this just to annoy Lanza's opponent. This has happened in the past. They meet on the ropes, roll to the corner, and uh, Shorn will make them break. Blackjack Lanza at about 265, Case around 240, 238, 240. Forearm, it's countered by Case as he moves back to the center, and again, Heenan gets up off the bench with words to the referee. A drag and a counter, a reversal now by Lanza. Case rolls under, but Lanza comes up on top with a hammerlock. Lanza now grasping at the trunks, goes back to the arm. Johnny Case from Chicago. Not what you'd call an old timer in the business, but he's a man who has a great deal of experience. In his middle to late 30s, and an exceptionally active wrestler has been for quite some time. He's underneath on this hold, of course, as Lanza enforces. Lanza from Albuquerque. You know, your place is to be over on the other side of the ring. I didn't invite you over. Stay on him. Stay on him. And as a matter of fact, I would imagine that most... every maneuver he does is illegal. We have talked over. Sure you have. Everything we've talked over. I suppose you say get him next to the ropes and choke him, right? When he gets in there, he knows what he's going to do that, man. We map out every man that we're against. I, I, would have, I would believe that. I would believe that. You get him into the ropes, you say choke him. Hey, you get him with the back hey, of the referee, Marlo, you let me say tell get you the something. knee in the throat, right? Remember this. People don't ask you how you win. They, if you, they ask you if you win. Remember that. They never ask you how you win. It's if you win. You don't make any money being a nice guy. Nice guys finish last. Hey, ref. Ref, watch this fish. You see a completely illegal maneuver. Look at that. Good counter by Case as he beals Lanza. Over to a neutral Ruff, corner. Keep him back, keep him back. And again, Heenan gets up as he recognizes now that Lanza's under the rope, absorbing the same punishment he was dishing out just moments ago. It's about time. Lanza under the ropes again as Case enforces and Lanza counters by pulling the trunks and will have to get them out of the neutral corner. Lanza back with a few words from the referee now the as referee, Case gets in circles to the right. Would you please go over and They're sit in your own place? Us. There's a dive. Hey. 
a single leg lock and a press, but uh, only for the count of two. A semi cradle let me, now. Let me tell you something about this. Every man that wrestles us is an underdog. That's why the people and the ref are always for the underdog. What do you say about this hold that Case is employing on? Stick around. Right? Watch. I've got faith in this man. Watch. We haven't come to the top without a little faith. You watch. Lonza tries to counter with the chin lock. Yes, at the, the moment, ref. to no avail. He he's is not, and you trunk. just be quiet. He's not using the trunks at all. He didn't, though, ref. He had the man's trunks. Now Lonza goes to the throat to get the break, and faith, we will like have to sure faith. About as illegal as you can get it. Lonza again with forearms, and now Shorn has to move in between. The referee is caught in the action. Lonza's mad now. Well, he's gone back to his corner, and look at this. Look at this. Uncalled for. Case again entwined in the ropes. And Heenan takes a boot in under the heart as Case counters, gets back to his feet in circles. A counter and a gouge at the eyes by Lanza. Black Jack Lanza, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Johnny Case on his knees, Chicago, Illinois. We're about six and a half minutes, about seven minutes in in this one fall match. Lonza goes to the buckle, now goes for the rope, and you see who's helping untie it. None other than our great pretty boy, Bobby Heenan. Case again, head first into that top buckle. And again, that is legal as is that counter. There's an open hand, an open hand to the head by Case. And again, with the legal attack into the buckle, Johnny Case with his own form of counters. Lonza goes through the rope, and Case is going to bring him back in. One, two, and two only, as Lonza almost finds himself down for the count of three. There's a drag across the eye. Lonza again with ruthless and uncalled for counters. And a well disguised chokehold. But the referee, one of the most competent in the business, recognizes the choke and orders for the break. Again, Lanza goes to the throat with a forearm, a boot to the midsection, up into the solar plexus, and he really planted the toes. Side headlock now by Lanza. To the rope, and he has the tag rope around the throat, and again, Shorn sees it. Now Heenan is employing the rope around the neck. And Shorn's getting fired up. And a quick count this time from Shorn, and we may have a disqualification if we don't watch out. I at one time saw a, a very controversial call. It pleased the fans, and it certainly pleased the wrestler who was underneath but a referee counted silently to himself as they do in collegiate and high school wrestling and then called the count of four and five out loud and it was too late Shorn has not done this but I wouldn't be a bit surprised if this keeps up that he might make that attempt here's a good counter by Case Abil as Lanza finds himself again in the neutral corner a front face drag and a figure four Puts Lanza within inches of having both shoulders to the mat. Well, if you're joining us for this first match, it's a good one. Blackjack Lanza, Albuquerque, New Mexico versus Johnny Case of Chicago, Illinois. A one-fall match. And it's been good from that first bell.
Now Lonza biting the leg or something, biting the thigh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's perfection, right? Sure. Lonza with a go behind, a counter by Case, and a reversal by Lonza. A short arm drag as Lonza gets into the ropes. And Case puts the boot in. Now a little bit of conversation between Heenan and Lonza as they continue to map their strategy. Top wrist lock. Case enforcing. Johnny Case with the hole. And Heenan claiming that he's using the fingers, and Heenan can see no better than anyone else around here, and I assure you, Johnny Case is on the wrist. A handful of hair puts Case to the mat. And now Lonza again has gone back to the face and the chin, biting as Heenan says, worked back into the ropes. Case takes him over, it lands hard. That was not the bell. The bell did ring with that vicious drop by Johnny Case. Another hard drop in the center of the ring as both men go down. Oh, and Case misses. Case misses as Lonza grabbed the rope and held on. Johnny Case took a vicious blow to his spine. Lonza has him up and Case into that buckle, and he has definitely been slowed down considerably. There's an open fist under the chin that was open. A boot up into the stomach three times, four, five. Into the buckle again, and again this ring shakes literally down to the bell. Look out. Body slam. Here's the bulldog, and it puts Case out as Lonza goes to the cover and gets the pinfall. 13 minutes, 15 seconds. 13-15, and the hand of Blackjack Lonza raised in victory as Bobby Heenan moves over to accept the boos, of course, from the fans here at ringside. Championship wrestling continues on television. Let's take time out just for a moment, though. We'll be back with more right after this message. I'm in Indiana, and also uh, at the same time, talk to you about this upcoming card, June 21st at the International Amphitheater here in Chicago. I don't have a complete card to announce to you. I, I can say that the chain gang has been signed. Uh, Bob Luce is looking for a suitable opponent, tag team, to meet them. And uh, Carpentier is signed on this card. Those are the only two names that I have verified. But uh, that's Saturday, June 21st at 8.30 at the International Amphitheater. And I do suggest that you make your plans now and uh, make them quite affirmatively to uh, attend this card. That's on the 21st. Let's talk now about the 24th just for a second. In uh, Hammond, Indiana, May 24th, Snyder and Martinez versus Comrade Nick and Comrade Boris. We have Mitsu Arakawa against Papo, Angelo Papo. Prince Pullins versus Tokyo Joe. You should like that match. That should be a good one. And Sandy Acosta meets Dirty Don. That's the preliminary match at 8.30, May 24th, next Saturday night. And uh, Hammond Civic Center again hosts another fine one. All right. More about all these a little bit later on. All right now, I want to have a couple of words with a very good friend of mine. The man who makes all of these cards possible. He's the promoter and general manager of the Chicago Wrestling Club here in Chicago. He also promotes and makes match all over 
the Midwest and uh, is very instrumental in having most of these wrestlers uh, arrive at contracts in other areas under other promoters. And I'm speaking of our very good friend Bob Luce. Nice to have you back again. And, uh, gee, I don't know what to talk to you about. We talked about the Hammond well, I know, last time. Uh, well, let me say this now. Uh, incidentally, since we talked about Mr. Clean, mm -hmm. I've ta been talking to a couple of prominent weightlifting people, mm -hmm. and they explained to me that that bench curl is the that, he does. that he does is the most the difficult curl. right mm -hmm. is the most difficult thing to do mm -hmm. of all the arm well, exercises. You know why? Well, because you got to yeah. do it with your arm, and you That's can't right, and nothing else. You can't give you it can't that get old the swing, right? right. Uh, I just want the fans out there to know this because I've had some letters from people saying, uh, "Is it really that tough?" And I, I just want you to know that just try it. You put can see how put something on your bench and try right. try That's to do right. that. That's all I ask your fans. Yeah. Now, uh, about this Hammond card, Chuck. Mm -hmm. Saturday. Yes. Uh, as you know, Comrade Borslav and Comrade Nikolai. Nick mm -hmm. Nikolai are former uh, champions. They are. They they now say that they're the international tag team champions, which does not include the world title, of course. But because they are Russians and because they have defeated all opposition, so they tell me. They say now that if they beat Snyder and Louis Martinez, who, Martinez being the Mexican heavyweight champion, Snyder a former world mm -hmm. champion, a former U.S. champion, that they will then claim the world title. What well, do I, you say? Well, I say this, that I want the fans out there to buy their tickets early. That's yeah. what I say because yeah. I predict we're going to have one tremendous card in Hammond with this main event. And let me tell you again, fans, where to get the tickets. C&C bail bonds in Hammond at 6011 Calumet Avenue. Go in and see Sam Miller or his good friend, uh, Sam's good friend, I have his <laughs> name right here. <laughs> I have to write this down, Pete yeah. Canelli. Pete's got a young uh, boy that's uh, 12 years old and he's a real fan. And I don't know Pete as well as I know Sam. I've known Sam for now three years. The three years we've been in Hammond and I found him to be a wonderful guy and a good man. And uh, just tell uh, Sam that uh, Bob Luce told you to come in and buy the ticket, 6011 Calumet Avenue. And one other thing about yeah. the amphitheater, the next show at the amphitheater. I'm going to have the chain gang there, fans, and I've got a big surprise for you. I've contacted Snyder and Ganya. I've contacted Dick the Bruiser and Mr. Clean. I've contacted Dick the Bruiser and the Crusher because, you see, Bruiser goes both ways, That's you see. Right. But yeah. I, have, I have a feeling about this Mr. Clean. I want I to tell you, too. I have a feeling I about this man. I, I don't know. I'm saying right here on television that this... Uh, I have a feeling about this man, especially when you come to a guy like the, the Dillingers, mm -hmm. who need to be wiped from the face of the earth, of course, and to get clean in there with the dirt, like they keep Very making well the, jibe, the jibe on TV, they're That's always right. calling him mm -hmm. Mr. Dirt. Well, I think Mr. <laughs> dirt, Mr. Clean, would love to get in and, and clean him up, mm -hmm. wipe him clean, so to speak. That's great. And Dick the Bruiser, of course, fans, if you'll notice, his muscle has been torn, uh, went up into his arm because he got clipped in a game in Green Bay, but let me tell you, the other guy got a broken leg out of it, so that's not so bad, but Dick the Bruiser and Mr. Clean with those four arms going for him against guys like the chain gang, right. I, I can't see nothing but El Squasho all the way. Two of the biggest men, certainly power I think, in that ring. I think they'll be popping their heads all <laughs> night, fans. You know, uh, can't you just see that, you know? You're great. Really, I, I have a feeling about that man, Mr. Clean, but I'll see you in Hammond uh, this Saturday night, That's fans, right. and this the is the 21st. Now we look right. forward to this right, is the, the international, international international tag team elimination bout of all time. All right, good, Bob. Thank you very, very much. A uh, great guy, and uh, a great card too for you fans in Hammond. Of course, all of you at the International Amphitheater. The last time is May 17th. You remember what a whale of a card you had up there, and uh, so this card on the 21st at the International Amphitheater could very well be as outstanding. Now, no, listen, don't play down this Mr. Clean Dick the Bruiser thing mentally because when you put two of the most powerful men in the ring together on the same team, there can be nothing but trouble brewing for the opposite team. All right? Now, I want to take a, just an opportunity here, if I can, to sort of, as, uh, as a commentator, as a uh, uh, sports commentator in wrestling, to analyze the wrestling fan here in the Chicago, Hammond, Northern Indiana, uh, South Milwaukee area. I think you have done what so many areas around the nation would like to do, and that is really put together 
a nucleus of a great, excited fan, of, a fan who is as loyal to wrestling as Italians are to spaghetti and meatballs and lasagna. I think that you have really set together the great, the success story of wrestling right here in the Chicago area, because the word is getting around all over the nation that Chicago has become the world's great wrestling mecca. It always has been the home of championship wrestling, but it proves it even farther now at the box office. We'll talk more later. More wrestling follows in a moment. You see in the near corner, from outer Mongolia, half this match, he weighs in 244, and I'm speaking specifically of the bear caped or whatever that may be, the Mongol, ladies and gentlemen, outer Mongolia, the Mongol. His opponent from Chicago, Illinois, and uh, very fair complexioned against this fella. He weighs in tonight at 239. Phil Christie, Phil Christie, one fall, 15. The nonchalant tactics of this I, individual, Bob. I, I've had a lot of letters on this Mongol uh, from the first card we had him on in Chicago a few weeks ago, a few, uh, not too long ago, and uh, the people asking, who is he? Well, I want to say that he is the original, the Mongol. The, there have been imitations, like a young fella called up and said, is he the Stomper? Well, the Stomper looks like him, but it's not the Stomper. This is the Mongol. This is the one, the original, that was brought from Mongolia. Uh, the champion wrestler in Mongolia. It, he, uh, he's not, he wasn't too civilized when he came here in 61, but I, as we remarked on the last show, or a recent show where he appeared, he has become rather civilized. But he is just as rough and tenacious as always. But he is the Mongol. That's the Mongol, the original. I just wanted to put that in here because I have had a number of calls on this. The first time I saw him, I think, was in late 61 uh, in, in Indianapolis at the Coliseum. And I understand at that time he was, uh, he was making what was referred to as token appearances across the nation. Uh, evidently, this, uh, the, the syndicate or whatever it was that brought him in was hitting him into Boston, into the Garden, uh, Detroit's Olympia, and uh, Chicago, back when Fred Kohler was uh, operating. That's and true. Uh, St. Louis, and, and he was just making spot appearances. True. Now he has seemed, uh, although he does travel across the nation continually and out of the country, he just recently returned from the Far East, he has settled in an area instead of just sort of being a uh, one-nighter. We're fortunate to uh, have uh, signed him to a contract to appear in matches in Indianapolis and Chicago and Elkhart and Fort Wayne and some of your major eastern cities. Through our auspices, he will appear there. But uh, let me say that he is a top-notch talent. He is one of the great wrestlers, the Asian wrestler, one of the great Asian wrestlers, and, uh, and we're happy to have him. Except, of course, he is rather rugged at times, but we're happy to have him in our... Uh, entourage, or stable, or whatever you might say. In other words, under contract to appear because he is top notch in Mongolia. You know, uh, I, at the risk of being called by some people at home as a supplanted favorite of this man, I would like to say, though, that this man's ruthlessness and his br brutal method in the ring does not employ and exorbitant amount of borderline tactics, Bob. He is just rough. Yeah, he beats right. his man That's true. down within the room. That's true. Well, uh, I've watched him wrestle on the plane. Look there. at this. I mean, for, right. there's nothing wrong with that. I've, I've watched him in his tribe when we, when we were negotiating to bring him here. He would put on exhibitions in his tribe in Mongolia, in the outer Mongolian part, and uh, these plainsmen, they are very rugged, and uh, they would wear this, the bear skin and their tongs around it, which they would grab, mm -hmm. and uh, it really was a rugged match right there in the dirt. Was it, did his style have to be changed? Any, I mean, uh, did they wrestle the same style or type of, I mean, for instance, the chops, the open hand chops, and 
Uh, really, you'd be surprised. Like that. You'd, uh, well, the Beals are not exactly the same type, but they I are Beals. Beals call they else, they yeah. do the body slam. They pick them up and slam them, just like we slam them. They do the same type of a Beal with a little variation. Yeah. But uh, one thing that they, uh, this, this, this thing that he's doing now, this headlock, this uh, grab, uh, you know, uh, moving him around and getting him in position, this is the common denominator and the stooping over, that kind of thing. And uh, can you imagine this in the hot, in the, in the real, like, uh, sand, uh, 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 dirt, uh, you know, uh, sandy, and, uh, oh, and, they, oh, and they go for hours. And this was the champion. This was the champion of that region. And let me tell you, the day I was there, he beat a seven-foot giant. You wouldn't believe this. They've got those over there, too. Oh, huh? seven foot and uh, re right, came in right off the plains. And, brother, he looked like he was going to eat about three of him. But this fellow is tremendous. He's got a lot of power and a lot of ability. And his father before him was a wrestler. His father's father before him. Well, Christie making a good effort. Cats is sort of rather surprised at that move that, because uh, Christie really, uh, he really uh, surprised me that he moved the Mongo like that. I, I think the Mongo's sort of playing with it. I, I really believe that. I really believe that. This, this Mongo is a, and what a powerhouse. I wish the people I don't, could I, see I'm going to take the thing away from Christie. I just think, we had a match like this about a week or so ago, when uh, Mitsu Arakawa just sort of toyed a little bit. Right, I And felt, felt his opponent out. You notice uh, a Mongol style, he very seldom bends the knee in a move. Now, he is now, of course, but I mean, when he's making a move in a hip lock or something like that, he's straight up over, he takes the man straight over his back. And that's how he beats his man. Look at this. This is a, just a down-to-earth type of move in wrestling, Chuck. That hammer lock, that side face lock, a combination of a hammer lock and a face lock, side face. Paper? Not really, but uh, just pure brute strength. That, that's he won't, hey, there's the ball. <laughs> Referee has determined that this that's how those tribesmen right. beat each other. That's their finish. This match, uh, Christie can no longer defend himself or can no longer compete. And the Mongol finally does release the hole, but now without a little insult. Let's check the time. Six minutes, 31 seconds, 631. So this one faller goes to the Mongol. And now... He is entitled to a moment or two of arrogant that's strut around the ring. That's a Mongolian victory cry. I wouldn't doubt it, yeah. Something like that. Well, as he leaves the ring, we will leave for a moment. But we'll be back. I, be I beg your pardon. Goodbye. Goodbye. Prosher, We'll be back. We'll be back, ladies and gentlemen, with more wrestling in just a moment. Don't go away. In the ring for a special two out of three fall curfew time limit match is half the next match in the ring. It is an Australian tag team encounter. And I think even determined by the chairs at ringside, we have a very, very popular team making an appearance. Introducing Far Corner from Chicago, Illinois, and Omaha, Nebraska at a combined tag weight of 492. Newcomer Johnny Diamond in the black and red tights and veteran Jim Eskew. Opponents, need more be said, from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and Reno, Nevada, now out of Indianapolis, Indiana, at a combined tag weight of 519 pounds, 519, the team, the cousin wrestling team, the crusher and the bruiser. This is going to be interest a1. Bruiser and Crusher, what do you have to say? Identical builds, identical minds. They both think the same way. Annihilation. The bell, here we go. And Bruiser immediately. With Crusher countering from outside, Johnny Diamond underneath all this. 
And Johnny, who weighs about 261 or so, a little bit heavier than Bruiser in the ring, does not carry his weight as well. And it's going to be interesting to watch this weight move around. Bruiser again, viciously lashing that fist right to the top of the forehead. Doesn't that remind you of an animal? Which one? Bruiser. Oh, bet me. And Crusher. They don't, uh, I just, I just finished saying, Bob, they both think alike, annihilation. Right, that's just, just it reminded me of an animal here. You see him looking down this way, he, you know, he scares me after death when I watch him, you know? I he, can just visualize he my... me, and I know there are ropes between us. Yeah, you never know about him, though. He might jump down and tear your head off, which he's done on a, numerous occasions with you, hasn't he, Chuck? Well, he's, he's come at me, but I'll admit, I mean, when Bruiser or anybody like that's around, uh, I'll turn. He's I think you will, too. Oh, hey, I want in, a, in a minute, in a minute, because you see, the people don't understand. When they start wrestling, they turn themselves on so much. They are, they, they, believe me, they aren't themselves anymore. Of course, I told you about the time Bruiser hit me in the dressing room. That's what I was remembering, and I think he was in that state. They, they put themselves in not a hypnotic trance, but they are in a state of real uh, competitiveness. Uh, what would you say? Uh, well, they're, they're just, uh, they're completely combat. absorbed. Yeah, they're they're a, that's right, they're, they're in a state absorbed of... absorbed in this Right. Way. That's all they think is, is contact. Hey, contact, look, we got an energetic SQ in here, huh? And Bruiser right away, well, we can't say the same thing about Bruiser we said about the Mongol, because he, he just... I think, Mon is, I think he could probably take that tribal, uh, uh, I think he could probably get three or four tribesmen too. together. I think he could too, but uh, whatever the Mongol would do, the Bruiser does ten times. Look at this. The, the knee. has got tremendous power, tremendous. He, for a big man, you'd never saw a man move like he moves. No. He's no, fast on his feet. I've watched him dance, would you believe? And he is oh, absolutely. Oh, really? really? You really? But his timing is so great. He's a, he's a great dancer because his timing is so great. In other words, he can do a lot of things. You know, some of your great fo greatest football players uh, were great dancers, you know, because it uh, that's part of sport, to be agile, yeah, yeah. quick. We, we know one who isn't, though. Did you read in the paper? Who's that? Uh, Gail Sayers. Oh, oh really? His wife said, she said, oh, really? watching him dance down the sideline, she couldn't believe. And he can't dance. Is that ball, right? Yeah. Well, this Bruiser, you know, he was a pulling uh, was a pulling guard with Green yeah, Bay, wasn't right, he? Right, right. And right. I know he told me many times that the fact that he was so agile, he'd get out of that hole and get over there and, and uh, knock two or three guys, go downfield. He wouldn't take one. He'd take three or four in, the, in, the, in one play. Look, look, look at this. Look at this. He does everything well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess you have he's, to say he's that vicious. as well. He's vicious. We know look that. It. Crusher shows he can do it. But you got to be vicious in this business. Yeah. You know, you need no referee in this match. No. He's done nothing except to count now. That's three times. Eskew is down, and here's the count. Four minutes, 48 seconds, 448. We'll stay right here, Bob, at ringside. Rather than separate these matches with a commercial, we'll stick right here for 60 seconds. Now, I don't know what they're going to do with Eskew. They'll have to get him up on his feet. Johnny Diamond, I think, is uh, mulling over in his own mind right now how fortunate he is. And uh, immediately is... I'll never forget the, the time ears. I saw Bruiser throw a fellow in Chicago right through a tavern door. Right through really? the tavern, right through the tavern door. And you wouldn't believe he is he is so powerful. Is he's he's Listen, uh, inhuman. That's yeah, the yeah. There there's a hundred percent peak in athletic ability between these two. I've I've never seen them higher for anything. They have great respect for one another. Did you know that? Chuck? Yes, they uh, really I do. do. I do. I uh, talked as I said that time. I talked to Crusher for four hours negotiating a contract. Uh, one thing that was stood out in my mind is his great respect for Bruiser as a as a man, as a talent, as a yeah. athlete, uh, and uh, that's one of the things that makes him so great as a team. Five seconds. Three. There's a bell. We're underway. 
if SQ can get back up. One boy's got a nosebleed. Uh, this this well in the black uh, black yes, he outfit. Does. SQ over the rope. And Bruiser is just going to aggravate. Did you it, notice huh? that right on that? That's why he's looking at the hand. He wants to see drawing blood. He's drawing more blood. Can you believe that? He is blood hungry. A blood look at lust. him. Look at him. Look at him. He's opening it up. He's the only man in wrestling I know that'll actually go after something like that. He's told me that on occasion. He, if he sees shark, blood, he'll bring more blood. The shark of the ring. He sees really? blood and he goes. Yeah, he will. Me. He'll he'll actually go up in the nose and pull and and punch that nose and try to get more blood coming. I don't know what it is. He's he's a really an animal. Crushers is not as bad, but he does. He's going for the nose. Yeah, he, Little popping jab, right. you know, like just you like see in boxing. boxing. Right. I'm just going to say that's the same idea. They these two no, play it just exactly the same way. They see blood and they go in there and try to bring more blood. The only difference is they won't stop a wrestling bout for that. They've got him bleeding pretty good. I've seen some bad matches too, blood matches. Really tough ones. Wrestling. Yes. Oh, yes, oh I've yes. seen him bleeding. Uh, you wouldn't believe it. Uh, they worse had blood. Than, worse than in boxing. Yeah, definitely. I've seen some very bad, bad cut men. Now look at, just look at that. Now people say, is course, it really they, blood? I is it really it, blood? Yeah. Now look at this. They've seen it. He's op They've opened up his nose. Now he's bleeding very badly, and they keep working on his nose. Ooh. Now there, that was right on the nose. Right on it. Now if we had a close-up shot of that, they could see this. That's blood, fans. That's real, honest to goodness blood. And that's the way they get it, just like that. There's a 260 flat on the mat, too. Crusher. Once but, Bruiser wants him over the rope, they want to do the same with him they did with Eskew. Remember, there was just a little trickle from his nose. I saw no, it. No. Now, it's, now it's coming all over the place. The tag. Bruiser says one more. Look at his hand. is full of blood. He shows his hand. One more time. Fans can't cringe at this. This is wrestling. The, the boy knew what he was getting into. He had a chance to back out. We had the standby ready. Eskew is laying over there. Notice Eskew, the doctor's with him across the ring. The doctor's with Eskew. He can't even move. I think he's maybe, I don't know, paralyzed. That's it. And the handshake at 3 minutes, 51 seconds, signifies two consecutive falls to Bruiser and Crusher. Over their opponents, Phil Eskew, Jim Eskew, pardon me. I've got a good friend, Phil Eskew. Jim Eskew and Johnny Diamond. We'll be back, ladies and gentlemen, more championship wrestling in just a moment. Okay, I don't want to talk about Hammond, Indiana without talking to my two good friends who will be meeting Comrade Nick and Comrade Boris on that card. That's Saturday night, May 24th, next Saturday night. Uh, before I run down that main event, let me run the, the supporting matches. Mitsu Arakawa meets Angelo Papo. Prince Pullins versus Tokyo Joe, and Sandy Acosta meets Dirty Don. The main event is Wilbur Snyder and Louis Martinez versus Comrades Nick and Comrade Boris. Now, let me tell you that Saturday night, June 21st, at the International Amphitheater, is the night for the next wrestling card at the Amphitheater in Chicago. And you have a lot of great names potentially to sign on that card. One has signed one team of great names, and that's the chain gang. Eduardo Carpentier has signed on that card, too, but there's no opponent name for him yet. And I do understand that Angelo Papo has signed to be on that card as well. So that's on the 21st, and we'll, we'll have to round robin that a little bit later on and talk more about that. Wilbur. Wilbur Snyder. Thank you, Chuck. Luis. Luis Martinez. Senor Marlowe. And uh, listen. I tell you, the fans in Hammond, Indiana, and South Chicago uh, should really have a delight in seeing you two together in the ring because I understand that there's been a great well, deal of call about this. You know, fans want to see you two wrestle together. Well, if I may say so, Chuck, we we got a lot of call about it too. Louis and I w were together one time mm -hmm. against this team of uh, Comrade and Boris and mm -hmm. Comrade Nick, and uh, we were kind of unhappy with the outcome of this match that we did have. We, maybe we would call this a rematch, mm -hmm. but uh, we're going to, certainly going in there with, uh, I, I, as I say, the outcome of the one before, we were very unhappy about yeah. it. We felt that uh, we didn't condone the way that the actions and the, 
way that they won this match, and this is a rematch, and we're going to come out of there as a winner this time. Mm -hmm. uh, Louis, you, in all your travels, and I know, that, of course, Wilbur, I'm not, I'm not playing down the fact that uh, that you haven't traveled because you have, but uh, Louis, uh, from Mexico, from Tijuana, in your travels up through the nation, have you ever seen really the caliber of tag team? Uh, talent uh, that is right here in the Midwest in Chicago and Cleveland. No, and I have not. Artists. No, I have not. And uh, speaking about uh, wrestling caliber, I'm very happy and very fortunate to have Wilbur Schneider as my partner. As you I know, I, you're both very and as a matter of fact, though, uh, Wilbur and I teamed up in California too, you know, when he was out there and yes, that, uh, right. campaigning down there. And I'm and now I'm very glad to have this man here because this man needs no introduction. The, p the people all know the type of athlete he is, and I, th I think he is one of the greatest. And I'm glad to have him on my side. Now, the people there in Hammond saw the action there. They saw with their own eyes what Wilbur Schneider and I can do. Because Schneider and I, we do exactly one thing, and that is teamwork. And uh, a better thing. team partner you couldn't ask. And I say this. Uh, well, it's like I say. I think it goes both ways. You know, I'm the only one that well, can stand out and look objectively I'd like, at I'd like it. I'd like to say know? this also, Chuck, myself. That and Louis uh, is appraising me here. I, uh, <laughs> I can't top it for, uh, in praise for himself. But it, as he says, it does take teamwork. And I think that we do have fine teamwork together. Sometimes in uh, these particular type matches, you find people that uh, they are individuals and have individual mm -hmm. styles. And it's not just because they well, they want to act that That's way, right. but it's the way they wrestle. That's but right. we, I feel that Louie and I put the team together well. And of course, I'm not knocking the uh, the, the Russians either. They They've been the team a long time, and they, they work well as a team. But it, I think we've got better teamwork, and we're going to come out of that ring of winners. All right, Wilbur, okay. thank you very thank much you. for the time. Louis, well, thank, thank you. you. De arriba, quiero ver todos mis paisanos. Todos mis paisanos, este presente en Hammond, eh? Very good. Puente suerte. All right. Now, again, very, very quickly, next Saturday night, you see the tag team, Martinez and Snyder versus the Comrades. You also see Mitsu Arakawa versus Angelo Papo. You see Prince Pullins meet Tokyo Joe. I told you before, don't discount this match. It should be a great one. And um, I'm not going to say too much about it. You'll be surprised on your own. Oh, Sandy Acosta. Sandy Acosta. Bring the Bashans and Mad Dogs, the Crusher, the Bruiser, Snyder. Now listen, we were All talking about bring them all. We, we don't, don't care, care what about it. We're, we're talking about Chicago. We, we don't care want what their background is. In. We want them. We want them. Any way they want to come, to get as many as want to come. We put we're our trademark in Hammond. We're going to put our trademark in down. Chicago. We'll do it the same they way in Hammond. We are, and, we've done and it we're going to do it, and nobody's going to stop us. Why do you want to talk about Hammond anyway? Let's talk about Chicago. You've already signed the 21st. Right. 21st card. You've signed yeah. for the card. You we're signed. Signed. You understand we're there. We're yeah, I understand there. you. Oh, I didn't really. We're I couldn't tell. Be there. Right. I couldn't tell. Oh, you think what are you trying to do? Me? Interrupt us or something? No, no, well, no. Because you stand there and you look right through me. Hey, I know what I'm talking about. We know we're going to be there. We're going to take on anybody that we can do because they ain't going to stop us. Especially what? the Crusher and the Bruiser. Crusher, Bruiser, the we don't nobody. care anybody. Because we're How the greatest, we're the chain nobody gang. Nobody can we're touch us. Right, we're the gang, baby. Nobody beats the gang. Incomparable and heard of anybody oh. beating the gang. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, how, you know, how much can they play down on the, on the, on the intelligence of the human being, ladies and gentlemen. They stand out here and belittle opponents all the time. And everyone, I have a feeling that they travel sort of in a little world of, of pseudo-confidence. I think they're constantly beleaguered by fear back here someplace. Well, all right. They have signed for that June 21st card at the International Amphitheater. As I said, Carpanier is also signed, as has Angelo Papo. But I have no card to announce to you now. I hope very soon to be able to announce a complete card. And when I do, I, I think it will fit well within the pattern of great and outstanding wrestling uh, extravaganzas in the Chicago area. And I'm going to have to pin Bob Luce down to the fact that maybe sometime very soon the demand may be such that we have to move outside once again. If it does, it may reach another milestone in Chicago's professional wrestling history. All right. Uh, that pretty much brings us up to date. Don't forget Saturday night, Hammond, Indiana, the 21st at the International Amphitheater here in Chicago. Until next week on TV, Chuck Marlow for now, and so long for now. Sit back, relax, 
and watch proceedings from our arena ring. These matches are under the sanction of the State Athletic Commission. Your referee assigned by the commission tonight is Bob Winkle. This first match already in the ring is scheduled for one fall, 20 minutes, one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first from Chicago, Illinois at 229 pounds, Tom Jones, Tom Jones, Chicago. His opponent from Edmonton, Canada. He weighs in at 275 pounds, Canada's greatest athlete and world's heavyweight wrestling champion, Gene Kaniski. There he is, Canada's greatest athlete. And your referee, Bob Winkle, Tom Jones of Chicago, Illinois, Kaniski's opponent in this one fall match. It's interesting to note that the matches, 15 or 20 minutes in the one fall category, when Kaniski is in that ring, seldom lasts more than about 11 or 12 minutes on occasion uh, against a, a toughie. He has been known to stay in there with the man about 12 or 13 minutes. Jones is a pretty good wrestler, so we should see a lot of fine action here. There's hip lock by Jones that puts Kaniski on the mat. One of the few times we've ever seen him taken back by an offensive move of an opponent. Side headlock. Someone wrote in and asked what the ring is covered by. Well, it's a canvas referred to as a tarpaulin or a mat cover. And uh, a very light layer of mohair padding underneath it just to keep the canvas from ripping on the three quarter inch plywood boards which make up the ring base. Those plywood boards are supported by two by eights and in some cases two by fours out at the edge of the ring for instance where very little beating is taken. And then these posts are solid metal four inch and they are connected by cable. The cable runs through the ring ropes and then also underneath the ring, these cables come to an intersection at the center of the ring. They're pulled taut, and then the ring ropes are pulled taut up above, and that's what gives the ring its stability. And for the most part, a wrestling or a boxing ring is constructed in much the same manner. So you can see the ring is quite durable. Kaniski makes a good test out of every corner and every inch of the ring because he runs his opponents from side to side up and down into just about every post and every rope available and accessible. So if it can hold up under a barrage of what he throws at it and what others of his size such as Moose Cholak who incidentally is on tonight's card can throw at it then you can see the ring is very capably built. These rings cost anywhere between two and three thousand dollars. So, a lot of money tied up in it, and they have to be good for that price. Ooh, there's a knee right to the midsection of Jones. Puts him down. And Kaniski, who loves to use the foot, stays right on his opponent with this attack. It's entirely legal. The sole of that foot against the small of the back. And Jones, who is much the smaller comes off the rope into a knee and down to the mat again he goes as Kaniski steps on the head. Drags that foot right across the forehead. Takes him up and down into a body slam there. You could see that ring didn't even give a bit. Not an inch. Well he's going to be counted off. Referee starts that disqualification count. A chop right to the top of the head. And a knee in the small of the back. Now Kaniski 
outside the ropes, and that count starts immediately. Two, three, and four. And he releases him at the count of four. Remember, a five count for disqualification. As this man will resort to every inch of legality before conceding. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, he is a roughie. A chokehold as he lifts Jones off that mat. And then slices a judo chop into the side of the neck. As the referee's disqualification count reached two, takes him up again. And again, the chop to the side of the throat. Jones, a bit of sporadic flailing of the legs there as he's back to his feet. There's a knifing right into the throat. And again, right into the side of the neck. It even hurt Kaniski's hand. And Winkle reminds Kaniski to stay off the hair. Up again in the chokehold. This time, Jones got back at him. It looks as if he used an eye gouge. Comes up from the floor with a good solid right and uses a headbutt at center ring. And that has turned Kaniski back toward the ropes momentarily. There's another headbutt and down he goes. Jones stays right with him, but Kaniski, never to be outdone in that ring, again starts using those knees. A judo chop off the rope. Again off the rope. And we're seeing the beginning of the end, I believe, because Jones cannot take too much more of this. The flat of the foot into the chest. That's enough to cave in a chest of a normal man. Up he goes and down into the backbreaker. There's the man waiting to be pinned. Kaniski will not do it, though. Up again and down again. And the referee says, start that count. He will not do it. Up again, down again, across the back. Here, I think we have a pin. Two and three, and that's it. This one fall match is completed. It goes to Gene Kaniski in six minutes, 51 seconds. And we'll have more championship wrestling coming your way in just a moment. Here's the official time. Six minutes, 51 seconds, 651. Your winner from Edmonton, Canada, the world's heavyweight champion, Gene Kaniski. We'll be back with more championship wrestling in just a moment. Carter, special championship wrestling reporter, telling you about the big card coming up at the Chicago Amphitheater, Saturday, November 2nd, 8.30 in the evening. It's going to be an exciting card. Matches are being signed for it now. And uh, on that card, a tag team match that you've all been looking for in Chicagoland for a long time, heading in race against Dick the Bruiser and his cousin, The Crusher. Now, before uh, we say any more about this card or that match, I li would like to remind you, of course, where you can get your advanced ticket sales for Chicago area professional wrestling uh, at all of the Chicago area ward stores, Morris Men's Shop on South Halstead, or Ticket Central at 212 Michigan. And, of course, you can get mail orders, post office box 1262, Chicago, Illinois, 06909. Now, don't forget to get your mail orders in as promptly as possible. It's 24-hour mail service as soon as your order is received. The tickets will be back in the mail back to you. And of course, you can pick up your own tickets uh, and select them personally by going to any Chicago area ward store, Morris Men's Shop, or Ticket Central. Now, to get back to this card, the one match that has been signed, Henning and Race against the Dick the Bruiser and his cousin, the Crusher. And I've asked uh, one of the finest wrestlers in the business today, that is Wilbur Snyder, to come in here and tell us a little bit about uh, this, Wilbur. Thank you very much, Bob. I just uh, happened to be around in the studio at this particular time. Uh, I wasn't on this card and uh, not on the next one. Uh, but I've 
due to other commitments. And I would just like to explain a little bit about uh, the reason that this match has been signed, uh, Crusher and Bruiser against Henning and Race. I think everybody's seen the match, which would have been last night, uh, knew, knows how they actually literally carry, had to carry the little midget out of that ring. And I think that it's kind of got to all the fans a little bit. And I, uh, it was last night that they got a hold of the crusher and Bob Luce, I'm talking of uh, promoter matchmaker Bob Luce, and this match was made last night. Bruiser and Crusher consented to wrestling Henning and Race on this next card, which uh, the date It'll is... It'll be November 2nd, Saturday. Right, right. So that's the way this came about. And uh, unfortunately, they haven't, he hasn't had time to put any of the other matches together yet. But uh, again, I say the way that the Henning and Race, um, well, uh, it, w it was uh, kind of distasteful, in fact. And uh, again, this is the way it came about, and this will be uh, one of the main events on that next November card. Well, Wilbur, thank you so much for coming in and explaining it to us because we were at a little bit of a loss after last night wondering exactly what had happened here. Well, and thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot, Wilbur Snyder. Now, let's get back to the action in the ring.